Yeah, I think the most exciting learning environment for me is nature. And um, because it has everything, it's where we come from, we tend to forget it. And also, we made such a mess of it that the coming hundred years we need to um, not recreate it because that gives us, then it becomes by definition culture, agriculture or forest culture but we need to let it grow again and I think that you know if you look at nature like for instance like methodologies like biomimicry so you look at what nature creates by itself and what you can learn from that as inspiration but also just you know the, the, your whole health and well-being if you're if you're in green spaces it's so good for for children and for teachers so that's one um, probably a second one is uh, is, although I find it frightening, is space. Um, if you talk a hundred years from now, can you only imagine what, what will we, we be doing in space? Was this all one big hoax? Eh, the whole everybody who now wants to do commercial space travel? Or is this, uh, is this for real and what does it mean? And um, yeah, that's also, it's not my favorite environment, but I think, yeah, you need to think about it. And uh, and uh, because on the one hand, we always overestimate the short-term effect of technology or other things, or even of our personal development. Like you think, like w within one year, I can stick to these resolutions, etc. And we underestimate the long-term effect. So if you take a hundred years, I mean, look at a hundred years ago. This wasn't here. So there's so many, so many opportunities uh, out there. Yeah, but I think um, bringing respect back into nature is essential. Uh, making sure that biodiversity is healthy again, um, not depleting the planet. And then, you know, education is at the basis of that. So why not have a classroom in, in nature, like the Green School on Bali? Every, every city uh, <laughs> should get more green and more schools in nature.